Bailey Martin. So the reason I wanted to make this movie, Third Man Out, was because I'd always wanted to make a, make a murder mystery. I've always wanted to, to do thrillers. I love mysteries and, and, and genre material. Look at this. Ruckus bank account? Uh huh. First rule of detective work, my love, follow the yellow brick road. All right, Dorothy. When I first heard about it, it was a gay private eye and his boyfriend. And I thought, yeah, you know what? That could be kind of a neat thing. We haven't seen that before. And I'm a fan of the old Thin Man movies from the 40s, the Dashiell Hammett book that became the Nicanora series everybody loves. And I thought, wow, a gay Nicanora would be kind of neat. Come on, where else you go when you want to find out what's going on under the rocks in this town, huh? It hit me right away as being something really special and really different that we hadn't seen before. Thank you, Hanson. You ever get sick of daddy, why don't you give me a call? It's so much fun for me as an actor to be playing these scenes. It's all that good, old-fashioned, noirish detective stuff. It all checks out. Standing around a corpse and figuring out the things and finding, you know, it's just so much fun to do. And creeping around at nighttime and finding clues, putting it all together. Donald! Hi, beautiful. How was your walk? Oh, it was fine, fine. Except for the end part, where I almost had a heart attack. What are you doing? Oh, yeah. Needed a soft target. I figured our fireplace was getting a facelift anyway, so. So you killed the mantle? There's a scene where I'm firing a gun into our, our mantle at home so I can we can run tests on the bullets and stuff. And, and I just got so excited that, you know, I'm going to take this down to the lab and, blah, 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 and I think that's the way Donald is, you know. He loves his work. I'll be back later. If you're lucky, I'll be bringing a bottle of wine. Ooh. What's in a word of advice? Never marry a private eye. I like the idea of making a gay film that's not a coming out story or an AIDS story or another difficulty being gay story. It's so tedious because we're, we're sort of beyond that. It's, you know. um, and, and as a gay man, I didn't really ever have any of those experiences because my life has been relatively easy, all things considered. So I didn't sort of have all those trials and tribulations, but I still wanted to make a movie that related to where I come from as a human being. And as a gay man, you kind of wanted to, to make stuff that is relevant to your own experience. And while I'm not actually a private eye solving murder mysteries, there's enough stuff in the story that I can relate to that I really was excited about making the picture. I was sent the script and I was asked to consider this role. And uh, I fell in love with it as soon as I read the, the script, partly because the role is so complex and deeply motivated and full of surprises. So it was nice to play an older man who's also got a very healthy sex life. You know, there's a huge range to the character. I read the script, and I liked the story. I liked the characters. I really liked my character and how Eddie developed and uh, his relationship with Jack. Okay. I saw the fire trucks leaving and the smoke. I thought you were dead. Oh, come on, Eddie. You knew he was alive. You were watching the whole thing. And I heard a lot about Ron. Oliver, the director, and I really wanted to take part in experiencing his work. The mystery itself is um, thematically a gay mystery. There's gay bashing elements, there's the uh, oppression of the Catholic Church, there's the idea of isolation that sometimes happens within the gay community as people get older. What brings you out here to my neighborhood? Uh, Timothy had a couple of questions. We just, we just, uh, we, we're just driving by the neighborhood. The reason a gay detective gets involved is that it tends to have some relationship to the community. He's the guy you call when something in the gay community has gone awry. Look, Strachey, I need your help. You're the only gay private eye in the Capital District, maybe in all of New York State. I see you figured that would make me sympathetic to your case, is that it? But even though they relate to the community, the community does not exist in isolation. This is the community vis-a-vis -a, -vis a much larger straight community that they have to exist in. Uh, sweetheart, I really appreciate you wanting to hire within the community and everything, but maybe just once we could have a contractor that doesn't see the whole world as one big gay pride float. I think this is the first time I've actually heard of a detective story that was 
you know, centered in the gay community and, and around a gay murder. And I think that's kind of interesting. Because he was getting death threats. The cops wouldn't help. He thought having you involved might save his life. And one of the, the points we bring up in the film is that who is going to go investigate these crimes? A lot of times we just assume that the police will go investigate. If it's a murder, it's a murder. But you know that this detective is going to put his heart in and his 100% kind of ability to try and find out who did this because he's gay and because it happened in his community. It's always gay this, gay that, gay, gay, gay. Enough already with the gay. You didn't happen to see anything going on over there today, did you? There have been thousands of cop series over the years, and there's never been a gay detective. It's kind of shocking when you think about it. Things that everybody else takes for granted, we've never had as a community. Excuse me, are you Donald Strachey? Yeah. Donald Strachey, the private eye? We're gonna do for you. Oh, you've already done enough. <laughs> Thanks to those pictures you took, my husband wants a divorce. Just want you to know you're an asshole. Yeah. When I first read the script, the first thing that appealed to me was that this wasn't a character that was like the perfect private detective. He has some glaring obvious defects of character that show. He can't always quite show up on time. His car is falling apart. His office is falling apart. Left to his own devices, I'm not sure that Donald would necessarily be able to show up on most occasions, you know, and sort of get it together, if not for his boyfriend. And that's what really attracted to me. It's this amazing, loving relationship, warts and all. Donald found the love of his life, and together they're creating a life together. And where Donald falls down, Timmy picks him up. And likewise, where Timmy falls short, Donald jumps in. And he's very protective over his husband and very, and very loving. I know those qualities, and I know that kind of love, and I want to bring that to life. The Bruce is a byproduct of being um, Chad Allen's partner in this movie and I get beaten up by the people that he's investigating in the film. Okay, I'm gonna call you a doctor. You've definitely got brain damage. No, no, listen, somebody killed Eddie's partner and no one's gonna care who it was, except us. Here is this incredibly stable relationship that gets them through what would be tumultuous and overwhelming for any other couple. That's how good relationships work for everyone, gay and straight. When you're, when you're in a great relationship, it, it smooths out all the bumps in the road and makes the road more enjoyable every day. And these are the type of relationships that really represent the majority of mainstream gay America. You have no appreciation for my integrity at all, do you? I love your integrity. You want to take it to an empty room? We can try out the rubber gloves. You're disgusting. That's why you love me. While it's amazing and fun that this is sort of a genre, noir detective story, what's unique about it is that this is also a gay detective. And this relationship is really special. It's much more in the tradition of Nick and Nora than it is some of the darker of the uh, noir genre. So what we have is the opportunity to create a character, Donald Strachey, who has both the elements of the Nick and Nora fun, loving, goofy, crazy, wild side when he's with Timmy, and those truly dark and scary and sometimes pushing the absolute limits of what's appropriate elements that you might find in a darker noir tale. And when you put them together, you have this really amazingly well-rounded, fun, interesting character, I think. And I am really getting an opportunity to stretch both of those sides and looking for those places where we can be campy and goofy and fun and just like a little boy almost, and as intense and serious as Donald Strachey gets. Gee, now tell me who DR is! Sometimes I think some of his success in detective work has more to do with his military-trained guttural kind of strength and will that he exerts over the people that he's talking to than it does even his instinct or intelligence. Timmy, the way he's written, was uh, you know, the son of a senator. I imagine that Timmy, as a gay man, probably came out quite easy. It wasn't like he didn't have a difficult coming out or any of that kind of stuff. And because of that, he doesn't have any reservations or hang-ups about what he is or, or how he feels about the world. And I think he still has a, a lot of faith in the world. He still sees the world as a a very good place. We basically take the classic stuff that you'd find in a murder mystery and twist it and put like a gay spin on it. Yeah, I'm Deke Steele. Because every private eye always has a snitch he goes to for information. And our snitch is a character named Dick Steele who's a porn star and he's a hustler and a callboy. So he basically knows everything that goes on in Albany in the town where the, the picture is set. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot. You know the best thing about the people on the phones, Donald? I uh, work for minimum wage. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Dick Steele is played by a, a real porn star, a guy by the name of Matthew Rush. 
and he uh, is like the biggest gay porn star in America. I make it an hour what I used to make in a day turning tricks at the hotel. You, know, you, see, you see that? You are a credit to Free Enterprise. <laughs> he was great too. We weren't expecting him to be so good. And he came and, and he was just wonderful and funny and, and self-effacing and he did a great job. How about we just put this all behind us? My character, he's pretty interesting. He's a, the stereotypical hooker who's definitely made something out of himself and now owns this, uh, this business. I think he's a pretty shady character. <laughs> I kind of like that. Uh, there's a kind of a, a darker side to him. Uh, it's interesting because I, I'm not, I've never escorted or anything like that. So doing this is kind of a jump. <laughs> I've been doing a, a lot of stage work uh, for the past two years and I've also done adult movies and doing the two, it, they're very different and then when the opportunity arose to do this I thought why not, let's, let's go for it and, and see what happens. H-G-B-R-N-Z You want this. I'll be replaced now by Jack Weatherall, noted thespian. Is it thespian or lesbian? <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, okay, that's cool, so bang, bang, bang. What is that blanket he's got the gun in? The character of Rutka is very confusing on the page, which makes it interesting for an actor to get at. Donald Strachey is a hypocrite! Would we'll happily watch a gay man die like a dog instead of help him find justice! <sighs> the thing I like about him is he's got secrets, and one of the big secrets is revealed at the very end of the film. Very high tech, John. Oh, I've played evil roles before, and they're great, they're interesting, they're complex psychologically. Are you insane? And there was a lot about when I first read the script that made me go, whoa. He's really uh, walking on the wild side, this guy. I don't think of him as evil. I think of him as driven and motivated and passionate about a cause. There's opportunity in the film to see uh, a fun side of him, a loving side of him, a humorous side of him. Hi there. Good morning. Andy? I'm working with a tremendous actor who plays Eddie. He plays my partner. Very supportive of not only me as an actor, but my character, which is tremendous resource for me. Jack's wonderful. Jack's great. I think he's a fabulous man, outside of being a fabulous actor, and we work really well together, and he's just, he's an artist. Relationship between Eddie and John Rutka is, John pretty much saved me. John took me away from a life that wasn't good for me and took me under his wing and, and helped me. And we became partners. Yes, I shot him. I did. But it was John's idea, not mine. I can relate to Eddie in the background I grew up in. Just the child that's in Eddie. We all have that child in us. And there's still that child in Eddie. There's still that, that kid who's reaching out for acceptance and reaching out for love and reaching out to, to like belong to something, to anything. To get some attention. <laughs> To show what kind of danger he was in. As a gay man, as a director, I've done a lot of different stuff. You know, kids movies and adult stuff and across the board, every possible thematic kind of thing. So I've always just done exactly as I do. If anything, in making this film, I don't have to filter my ideas and experience through a different prism. So when I'm making something, I don't have to think about, okay, so it's a boy and a girl in a park walking hand in hand, yada, yada, yada. It's a boy and a boy walking in a park, and that's something I can relate to. He keeps walking, beautiful, fantastic. Our boys come in. And the boys. The boys come in. Oh my God, it's gorgeous. For me personally, it's different. It feels different. I don't think it's stylistically any different. I'm probably doing things exactly the same as I would normally. But I honestly can say, I don't think I've ever had as much fun on a film set as I have had on this one. And everybody always says that. Oh, it's the most fun set ever, and oh, everyone's wonderful, and blah, blah, blah. But the truth is that this really is the most fun I think I've ever had making a movie. It's wonderful to make a picture that everybody's involved in so positively. So in that respect, I would say, yeah, I guess I am directing a little bit differently because I'm directing it with an absolute freedom. I'm actually directing it faster. The dialogue is faster um, and so forth because obviously if you're directing for straight people, you have to slow things down so they understand. <laughs> That's how you make a game movie. That's how you make a game movie. I've been acting for over 25 years. I've done a lot of television series and a lot of movies and a lot of love scenes and a lot of romantic uh, lead types of characters. 
And it's always me trying to imagine what it is I'd really like to be kissing. And it's just a really neat experience to finally being able to just take one more layer off of my soul and just be able to be that much more present in a character and in the film. <laughs> What's it like being a role model for, for gay Americans? Well, you know, I feel it's a big responsibility. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's just it's something that I've gladly accepted as a burden of uh, who I am. That's true. And I like to put an image out there. You know, the kids need someone to look up to. I think you're right, Chad. You know, I've done a lot of work myself trying to help, uh, help uh, gay America. Yeah, you know, Time. We chose Chad for a lot of reasons. He was pretty much what we had in mind physically, and he brings to it the fact that he is an openly gay actor and has had to prosper in a straight world, very much like his character has had to do. Also someone who in his life has had very committed relationships. Our character has a very committed relationship. This is not the stereotypical gay character who's out, you know, at bars. This is a guy who really shows up for his relationship. What do you say? I've been open and gay since I was uh, about 24 when I came out in the, in the uh, professional side of things, and since I was about 20, 21 years old personally. And I never played a gay character. I've always been told that I wasn't gay enough to play a gay character. And they came and started talking about a gay detective. It sounded intriguing to me. When I read the script, I was immediately taken by the relationship. I thought that the relationship between Donald and Timmy was one of the most interesting and profound and just loving uh, relationships I'd seen in TV, let alone as a gay couple, and it fascinated me. I love you. Okay, I love you too. Good, take a cab home. What? Donald? Where are you going? In this movie we talk about outing powerful, influential people who are, are in the closet, and it's one of the plot thrusts in the story. I'm surprised they even let you in here after you ruined Dr. Polk's life. Please. Ed Polk was the head of the hospital board and the biggest rest stop queen on the New York State Thruway. And for that, he deserves to lose his job and his family and everything he's worked for, huh? Well, he shouldn't have voted against expanding HIV care in this hospital. Personally, I'm of two minds about it. On one hand, I think everyone has the right to, to their own privacy and to come to themselves in whatever time frame that they, they do. On the other hand, I have very little patience for closet cases. Um, I find them sad and pathetic, frankly. And uh, as somebody who is clearly an out man living in this world, um, I, I don't get what all the fuss is. I hear a lot of people say, well, if I come out, I'll lose my job. Are you so bad at your job that they're going to fire you because you're gay? Then you might as well get a different job because you're clearly an idiot. There's gay football players, there's gay hockey players, there's athletes, politicians, a lot of which are probably still in the closet for the sake of their career. You think I print the Rutka report, pay for it out of my own pocket, so I can get invited to the Chamber of Commerce Christmas party? In this story, for example, someone who votes against a gay rights bill and so on, of course, outed instantly. You must be instantly outed, because that's just, you're, you're being a bad person. That's not trying to be true to yourself, that's just being fundamentally evil. I do it because somebody has to speak up for all the Matthew Shepherds out there, for all the gay men and women who are brutalized and murdered every day. Somebody has to take a stand before religious hypocrisy and homophobia turn this country into a 21st century version of Nazi Germany. Being in the closet is such a sad, horrible thing. Everyone says the same thing over and over again. When I came out of the closet, my whole life changed. I felt so much better about myself. And it's just like sad because, dude, you're 55 and you've just come out of the closet? What have you been doing all these years? Donald was outed in the military. That's a secret that gets uh, revealed in this film. I did have some experience with that when someone I was with sold photos of us together in a magazine and so on and so forth. It was quite some time ago. I was still so young. Figuring out how to, how to deal with that was, uh, was quite an issue and quite a scary experience for me. And the decision came of whether I should publicly come out or not. And I got a really brilliant piece of advice. A dear friend of mine told me, you just don't talk about it until it's good news. And, and when it's good news to you, it'll be good news to everybody else. And that's been my experience across the board. And I think the idea of forcing somebody out of the closet if they're not ready to, if it's not the good news for them, is, is just a horrifying way to go about doing things. Because I don't think in the end, I think it backfires ultimately, you know? If anybody that's out there isn't ready to be, it's not, it's not going to be the good news for the community. It's not going to be the good news for them personally. For anybody else, it doesn't achieve anything. The idea of outing is uh, a very dangerous topic, still is, even though 
my character in the piece says that it has lost somewhat of its shock value, and I think that's true, and I think that's probably a good sign that we're somewhat evolving in this bloody society of ours. I do what I do for the good of us all. Yeah, your regular mother Clarissa. <laughs> okay. Timmy, I think maybe you better take Dr. Watson for a walk. I just did. I think he needs to go again. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. While I out my dog for the good of us all. What is great about <laughs> delving into my character is that I understand his motive and his passion and why he feels that the end justifies the means. And the means for him is outing political figures, but it's, it's very clear that he only goes after those characters where there's hypocrisy involved, where secretly they lead one life and on a larger platform they are working contrary to what they should be working for. They're speaking out against gay rights. And in that sense, I do understand why those people should be exposed. Right on the desk in his office, your government dollars at work. Is that Assemblyman Bruno Slinger, just two hours after he voted against the domestic partner bill. God, Rick. He puts the ass into Assemblyman. I can understand it. The hypocrisy behind it all and having someone be against gay marriage, be against gay rights, who is in the government, and turn around and seeing them in a bathhouse or seeing them with a man, uh, I can totally understand the frustration and everything else. Outing them, it's free speech. I am opposed to it. I think it's wrong. If you're living in a free country, you should be free to have a private life. I promised myself I wouldn't get emotional about all this. It's everyone's individual right to vote how they vote. It's anyone's individual right to be gay or not gay. And it's anyone's individual right to do with their body as they see fit, you know. It's their choice. So I'm opposed to the concept of somebody thinking they have the right to expose you for whatever reason, whether it's whether you're gay or not. Now, is that really any of your business? There was a time when I came out publicly and decided that, that if it meant the end of my acting career if it helped a handful even of these young kids who were writing to me saying are you really gay because I'm, I'm I think I might be gay but I can't be gay in my world and if you are gosh that would mean the world to me and I thought if it helps just a handful of those kids then it'll be worth it even if it means the end of my acting career the fact of the matter is you know since I came out my career has been more interesting and wonderful and fun than it ever has been you know, and I'm sitting now on the set of a film, creating a character and working on a film project that's fast become one of the favorite pieces I've ever been involved with. And I'm here because I'm an openly gay actor. That's enough. What must that be like for you, huh? What must it be like to look at yourself in the mirror every morning and see a homosexual looking back at you? It's such an intense thing. It doesn't go away overnight, you know? That even those of us who are out and open sometimes still battle with those demons that are inside of that internalized homophobia and the fear and the shame and, you know, and the stuff coming at you from family or from different places. It's, uh, it's not always an easy thing. In Donald's life, you know, he's obviously come to a peace with who he is as a sexual being. I think his relationship has helped that to come about. Donald! Case closed? In a way, actors climb into the closet every day of their lives my own personal life gets channeled into the safety in a certain way, the liberation of playing a character. My own life is not exposed, but some element of me is always being exposed through the characters I play. The cast is, a, is an absolute pleasure to work with. Chad, Jack, Sebastian, myself, it's just been great. There's no attitude, it's just everyone's working together, everyone's having so much fun. We're calling each other, we're getting together, we're going for dinners, and it's just a really, there's, it's so nice to just have a bunch of artists work together. Action! First I heard of Ron was when uh, we started talking about doing this series. The producers mentioned his name, that they were hoping that he would be the director. And I checked him out a little bit on uh, IMDb and uh, saw some of his credits and talked to a couple people that knew him. He comes on with a fantastic reputation and a wonderful, fun website of his own. My assistant, who was checking things out for me, called me and said, Well, he seems like he's got some great credits. I said, But I can guarantee you, you're going to have a good time. And um, that's absolutely been the case, you know. It turns out that he's actually been 
uh, one of the best directors that I've worked with in a very long time. I just love his style. He concentrated on really making the genre of the piece come to life. And at the same time, from the top down, he's created an atmosphere of respect and caring for everybody that transcends. Everyone on the show is taking such good care of each other, and that comes from the top down. I really look forward to us working together a lot in the future. It's a playground. He just makes the set so relaxed and enjoyable. I mean, we're shooting a lot, a lot of work every day. Yet I'm sure he's got his own stress, but Ron, he wears his slippers and his tie. And he's an actor's director. He really takes time with his actors, and which is really appreciated. Oh, it's a treat and a half. He's, he's got great energy. You know, you go to the monitor, and uh, Ron's got his iPod stereo system hooked up, and he's playing It's Raining Men. So every time you go over there, you're re-energized whenever you talk to Ron. But also, he just knows what he wants, and he, and he knows what he's doing behind the... Uh, the camera and, and uh, everything's been well thought out so there's no kind of there's no gray areas you know I talked with Kim Miles who is our director of photography and he and I spoke quite a bit about the look of this picture we wanted it to be film noir we wanted it to emulate the style of the pictures in the 40s and the look has been amazing Kim is just an incredibly talented guy you know for someone with his limited skill set um, he's an incredibly talented guy and cut <laughs> that's all right we screened some movies. We sat around and watched Detour by Edgar Ulmer and, and Out of the Past and Murder My Sweet and uh, Mildred Pierce, of course, and all these great film noir that had been made back then. And a lot of the similar elements from those films, we pulled in and used them in this picture. And we have some stylistic touches throughout the movie as well. I wanted the occasional touchstone moment to occur that would remind us we're watching film noir. Like the first time we meet Detective Bub Bailey. He's wearing a fedora and a trench coat outside. Detective Bradley Bailey, Albany Police Department. Wonder if you'd mind taking a little ride with me. It's such a classic kind of detective look for film noir. It rings a little bell in your head and you go, oh, it's that kind of a movie, you know? And there's a nightclub scene, because every great film noir always has a nightclub scene. There's a smoky jazz club someplace. A lot of people in tuxedos and dinner jackets and dresses and so on. And, and uh, a jazz singer, a woman here in town in Vancouver named Sybil Thrasher. Peter Allen, and a composer, um, wrote this great song and she sings it. So we have all of those elements woven throughout. So even though you're watching a contemporary film, you're still aware of the fact that you're watching something that's deeply rooted in the film noir tradition. You got me. So how much is this going to cost me? What I'm very excited about is I always say that this is such a good murder mystery. They're such a wonderful detective stories. You know, it's the kind of stuff that my dad would love to watch. He loves detective stories. And the relationships are good, the characters are good. For the gay community, you know, we get heroes too for the first time.